Um, thank you for introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Marina, and uh, as it was announced today, I would like to talk about uh, post-trade complexity and disruptive technologies. Uh, in our work, we focus on functional and non-functional testing. Most of the business being in the market infrastructure space, exchanges and clearing. And there are three principles which can help you to test even most sophisticated technology platforms. They are no trust, no fear, no begging. True courage is required when, um, when we would like um, to test something difficult and one faces disruptive technologies. And what's the difference between incumbent and disruptive? Incumbent means working with something we already know and something we can expect to execute in a certain way. Um, disruptive technologies occur when we face some new things, and these new things will redefine what we already know. Incumbent testing of post-trade systems is a very complex area to begin with. Post-trade systems are massive. They have many interfaces, many distributed components, and legacy systems. And there are so many challenges in testing of such systems, starting from participant and asset classes complexity, followed by uh, life cycle complexity, and resulting in multi-day cycles on top of risk calculations. And traditional software testing is hooked on preconceptions about how the system is supposed to work. And only disruptive testing is able to reveal truly new knowledge and let us learn from that. Um, we think about ourselves as a defect mining company. It means um, that, so as a main goal of disruptive testing is to find defects which cannot be found in testing with other methods. And in order to do it, um, we reveal on a set of testing tools. And one of them is the ClearTH tool, which is used in several global exchange groups. And uh, ClearTH simultaneously connects to all possible endpoints to simulate various data flows. The tool concurrently operates on these endpoints and produces diverse random loads, placing the post-trade system under risk conditions. And uh, we carefully studied from everything that happens at every endpoint and even internally within the system. And this allows us to identify the problems which will not occur during the ordinary functional testing. And um, this approach is used in supporting large initiatives, both in the agile mode and also in the waterfall model. Uh, at the moment, most of the large financial sector organizations are going through an agile transformation. And running scenarios in small sprints for large systems represents a lot of challenges. Um, and the first idea that comes in mind during a transition to an agile model is trying to squeeze and limit all the software testing into sprints. And often it leads to confirmation bias testing. Uh, it means that uh, we, the system is expected to work. And instead of trying to obtain some new knowledge, the testers convince themselves that it is working as expected. And um, in that case, only truly brave can look at the software and understand that in that case, all of it will end badly. This is the mentality. This is which is required from a software tester. Uh, performing the ordinary functional testing is much like obeying the main safety rule on board a submarine. 
which is do not open portholes when underwater. It means that um, ordinary functional testing comes down to iterating through a number of scenarios. It can be from one to over 100 and trying to prove that the portholes will indeed not open. Non-functional testing, from the other hand, lies in iterating through an even smaller number of scenarios. Uh, that's the general tendency across our projects to prove that the portholes will not open by brute force. Last but not least is disruptive testing. Test without fear. It means that so its, it's, it's first part consists in iterating through a huge number of random diverse scenarios under load to prove that the portholes stay shut. But the second part of it is opening the portholes. And um, disruptive testing, disruptive functional testing is the only way to ensure that your system is not only ready for what you expect, but it is also potentially ready for the unexpected. And when new disruptive technologies are introduced, the software testing approach that is used should match the complexity and the nature of these disruptive technologies. Thank you. Doing disruptive testing and you're you're trying to find bugs, how do you avoid the problem of finding a lot of bugs that say don't matter? Um, you know, that that aren't critical to the business requirements? Um, yeah, so that's actually a good question. Thank you for that. Uh, when so I think when we are talking about disruptive testing, we still need to uh, think about some balance, you know, and some structure during the testing because anyway, we need to start from something like production-like scenarios, you know, as a first step to see that the system we are trying to test is operate somehow, and after that, depending on the system, depending on complexity, we need to uh, define the strategy which we will follow. So that means that I think that's the main idea, trying to keep that balance within the test and even using the disruptive technologies. Okay, with, with the disruptive testing, how do you... Uh how do you create all the scenarios? Who, who thinks outside the square to come up with those scenarios that might open the porthole? <laughs> um, so, um, so again, when we, um, so for example, we have, we received some new system to test, right? First of all, we, we need to analyze what's the requirements, what's the potential problems and um, so gathering these requirements, confirming with uh, business and users what's we expected. That's the way for testers to come up with the most appropriate uh, test plan, how we are going to test in future. Yeah, I think that's the most uh, sufficient way here. Okay, any more questions? Okay, thank you, Marina. Thank you very much and enjoy the conference.